All right, Adrian, right. you ready? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> um, all right, we, we got a... Well, first of all, we're doing something new, mm-hmm. which is that we're going to try a audio video podcast version of um, our weekly sort of Arizona tech summary. Yep. Um, and then we're also going to talk about national tech news. Yeah, there's a lot going on. All right. We've got to stay up with it. Should we just jump right into it? Let's jump right in. Okay. What's going on in Arizona? So Talk I've to got me. my little notepad. All right. has all our notes. Um, so Arizona's still kind of um, moving along. I feel like it's been a little bit slower, but um, it just but there's been some big news in, in terms of um, raises and new products, acquisitions. Um, that doesn't sound slow at all. It doesn't sound slow, but okay. I feel like, well. Yeah, well, yeah. Let's, let, go, t- tell us, what are, what are some of the raises and acquisitions that have happened? All right, so we have two different companies who have raised money, um, who've done series rounds with Goldman Sachs. Okay. Um, we have, most recently, we have eVisit. Okay. So that's the company that- Brett um, Larson's company. Providing telehealth. Okay. Uh, improving telehealth care, basically. Um, and How much then did they raise? They raised $45 million. Holy cow. It's pretty big. So I was actually in eVisit through Arizona Founders Fund, Romy's Fund. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I got a big check from Arizona Founders Fund. I wasn't, like, I didn't realize that that's probably why. They probably got the $45 million from, uh, from Goldman Sachs and cashed out everybody. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So you're out then? Well, I'm out of e-visit. I'm still in the remaining sort of funds uh, right. or, you know, investments from a- Arizona Founders Fund. But um, I think Arizona Founders Fund has cashed out their e-visit investment. Interesting. Yeah. Well, we might have to confirm that with Romy, but <laughs> just a little bit of inside. <laughs> We've got the inside scoop. From inside Hamid. scoop. Um, and then we have another raise by Nextiva. Okay. Um, I actually... Embarrassingly, I haven't been really super aware of this company, but now that I once I wrote this story, I drive by. Turns out I drive by Nextiva every day coming yeah, to work. Yeah, they're right off of like the 101 and Via de Ventura, yep. right? And they're the telephone company. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, they're like they call themselves a connected commun- communications. So they kind of facilitate any sort of communications within a company. And from what I understand, they kind of. Um, allow all the other communications to be in one place like okay. slack it all the messages that you get from different places so yeah, that makes sense so uh, you said how much did they raise they raised 200 million from goldman sachs as well yes goldman is getting super uh active huh? i know and in arizona so loving that's arizona two, like that's a quarter of a billion dollars and you call that a slow week <laughs> I guess so. I've been watching Shark Tank too much. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. It. I'm excited. All right. Um, so, yeah, some big raises. And then we have something that you're personally connected to in a way, Get Kraken, just acquired a company called Big Breast Band. Yeah. Um, so tell us about that. Well, I'm yeah. So, uh, first of all, I'm not uh, part of Axosoft or Get Kraken any. Well, I am, I guess. I still am part owner and I'm on the board of directors. So, um, but I'm not in the day to day. So, right. I kind of um, uh, have secondhand information, but they just announced that uh, uh, they bought Big Brass Band, which is pretty interesting. It's a, a Git um, integration for Jira. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a, it's a you know, multi million dollar. Um, revenue company it's a pretty big acquisition for axosoft or i think the new name of axosoft is going to be git kraken going forward so it's a big acquisition for git kraken and i'm pretty excited about it they're they're doing some cool stuff there and so keep our good friend um Clay mask. Clay mask i almost said greg scores feet for some reason yeah i mean it's almost interchangeable <laughs> <laughs> both good guys <laughs> exactly uh yeah Clay masks company they just came out with some e-commerce capabilities for for keep. for keep um they're so not only are they able to help small businesses kind of nav- navigate the business side but um they also help k- 
can now help small businesses create their online store and nice. help that be seamless transition. So I think that's a good move for Keep. Yeah, and they also allow you know integration with Shopify, which a, probably a lot of businesses are using right. if they're small businesses. Um, so yeah, just really really smart moves. Some really exciting um, money coming in. Um, so go Arizona. Yeah. I'll have to retract my previous, it's been kind of slow. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to all of those companies who we just talked about. Um, yeah, and uh, there's actually a lot of um, uh, angel activity happening as well, which is kind of inter uh, super interesting. I think uh, Equipify um, has um, raised some money. I'm, I'm not sure if they've actually made it public yet, but I'm, I might be jumping the, <laughs> the gun <laughs> making it public. I probably better not say anything <laughs> considering uh, I've invested in that deal. Um, but yeah, uh, really cool stuff happening. And, you know, Equipify, of course, is uh, in the AZ co-work space, where, which is where we work. So we see Bryce uh, all the time. Um, so it's hard not to get excited about what they're doing. Yeah, Bryce is such a nice guy. Um, I just have a funny story. Yesterday, I was, so Bryce has to walk by our office every day. <laughs> and I was leaned back in my chair with my it's eyes closed. Yeah. <laughs> to walk by the office. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I was leaned back in my chair with my eyes closed. And he thought I was like, passed out or something and he like knocks on the window and he's like can I get you anything and I was he was I was like oh why and he goes because you looked like you had passed out or were sleeping or something and I was like oh boy no I was just listening to our podcast but anyway oh, so Bryce is a nice guy he does wellness checks here he's really just helping everybody stay awake and alert <laughs> <laughs> at AZ That's awesome. work. What's going on at the national level? National level. We've got a lot of interesting conversations that we could have, but let's dive into SpaceX just launched four civilians into space. Yeah, that's huge inspiration for. I, I love the fact that they did that. It's such a huge leap. And first of all, it's such a gutsy move to take like the fourth launch of the uh, Dragon and put like civilians on it. This could have gone terribly <laughs> wrong. I mean, like it could have potentially shut down um, Elon Musk's uh, goals of getting to Mars. Yep. But on the other hand, a success is a huge leap forward for getting sort of civilians into space, which is pretty incredible. And of course, we know it's sort of like, y you know, that uh, it was a big success and they are back and safe. And <laughs> but what an incredible uh, mission. Right. And they raised a couple hundred million dollars for St. Jude's, um, which is pretty awesome. I mean, like I knew about St. Jude's before. I know a lot more about it now. Um, I've watched the Netflix special, by the way, which it, they've released four episodes on Inspiration4. I don't know. Have you seen any of those? I haven't. So Netflix did a, I think it's going to be a five or six part series on this mission specifically. And they put it out before the launch. They put four of the episodes out before the launch, and I think episode five or six might actually be the launch and what they're doing in space and the return probably. So I'm, you know, guessing there. Uh, but uh, super fascinating. The way that they picked their crew, the sort of like main commander, uh, all of it is just absolutely amazing. And they got a congratulations from Jeff Bezos, which is kind of interesting because he's been suing the hell out of uh, <laughs> NASA and SpaceX and, uh, you know, everybody there for like everything from Starlink to NASA's grant of the um, moon lander to SpaceX. So for him to actually come out and congratulate Elon Musk and SpaceX was actually like one step forward for Jeff Bezos. He seems to have been like, I don't know, making the, a, a lot of the petty moves recently, especially even with um, Virgin Galactic, he sort of like poo-pooed their launch into space because it was like 20 kilometers lower than their launch into space. Yeah. So so but, you could kind of say that it's one step forward for Jeff Bezos, one <laughs> giant leap for space relations. <laughs> for SpaceX. <laughs> for maybe. SpaceX. Um, but what's interesting is that we haven't heard anything from the president on um, congratulating them which is surprising. It seems like the president is snubbing a little bit or ghosting Elon Musk, Tesla, and SpaceX. And I don't know what's going on with that, but well, I'd love to. Well, I was going to ask you, like, what do you think? Why would he be doing that? 
I have no idea. I, I, I don't understand. Like he, he, Elon Musk is doing more to sort of advance, uh, you know, clean energy and space exploration than anyone else. And these are sort of like the science and environmental aspects that the Democrats care the most about. And instead he's, you know, snubbing Tesla, not inviting them to the White House when they invited other uh, sort of car makers to focus on EVs, which Tesla's number one in. Uh, and then for like this inspiration for just complete silence from a congratulatory perspective, which is shocking. That is shocking. Um, I want to move on to EVs because there's been some progress there. Yeah. But before I do, I was watching the SpaceX launch um, with like maybe more anxiety than was like natural Yeah. for me just because I'm an unrelated person, you know, right. but I was like thinking the same along the same lines as you were like, man, if it's, this goes wrong, like it, my stomach even kind of like lurched when I saw that they had taken off because right. I was like, I mean, let's just hope they get back. <laughs> <laughs> like I was like, this is actually pretty scary. Yeah. And and the way, you know, they, like, for example, one of the one of the uh, uh crew members who um, they picked is a, a sort of a cancer survivor. She knew nothing about going to space or, you know, space exploration. Like when they like told her she won this sort of like um, or, or has been chosen to go to space, she's like, are we going to the moon? You know, like that's how, you know, naive she was about space exploration. And so like they pick someone who knows absolutely, no absolutely nothing. And prior to getting picked, had no sort of, like, sort of in her wildest imagination, couldn't have dreamed of going to space or didn't dream of going to space, not that wouldn't have. Um, and then, of course, you know, like, she turns out to be this superstar, and, like, she she steals the show in terms of, like, uh, the, the Netflix special. If you watch it, you, you'll, you're going to fall in love with her because mm -hmm. she's just amazing. Um, but if something could have would have gone wrong, it would have been disastrous mm -hmm. because here was this amazing face to this mission, and they put out the four episodes before the <laughs> before the launch it was just like wow you know they couldn't have you know like it it was very very risky uh and of course the last time the u.s sent a civilian was the teacher in 1986 uh space shuttle challenger or something mm -hmm. like that and that was it you know of course it ended in a disaster so um yeah uh, that was an incredibly risky move in my opinion and it just it just embodies Elon Musk in terms of the kind of risks he takes sometimes unnecessarily, but uh, but also it probably helped advance, you know, um, space exploration quite a bit. Uh, when I think of this SpaceX launch too, I think of the movie Contact. Yeah. Which that movie I think is one of the scariest movies I've ever seen, and it like traumatized me and my brother when we were growing up. Really. And so thinking of like. I, I Did Jodie Foster contact Yes. You? It's one of my favorite movies that of all time. That movie scares me so bad. It's like from the moment that you start hearing the like, wah, wah, mm -hmm. yeah. like the alien sounds. Oh, yeah. I got goosebumps watching that movie at that <laughs> at, at that uh, scene where they yeah. hear that. But it, it's not scary as in like jump scary or horror movie no, scary. No, but it is like chilling for it's me. It's chilling. Like I cannot... I can't watch it ever again. What? Because it is so scary. I love that movie. Well, first of all, it's not a scary movie. Let's yes. just put that clear. Like, we're, I know we're going off track, but if anybody is listening to this, <laughs> both Don't of you. Don't watch Contact. <laughs> you will be traumatized. It's, it's a fantastic movie. So It's uh, definitely on my short list of all-time greatest movies. That's intense. Yeah. I would never put it there on mine. <laughs> but that's why, like, I'm, like, very fearful of going to space. And my husband wants to go to space so bad. I'm assuming you do, too. Oh, of course. And I would never. You couldn't pay me enough to go to space. <laughs> if someone came to me and said, you're chosen for this SpaceX launch, I would be like, you choose someone else right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, anyway, I'm very, very afraid of space. Um, okay, so moving on. Okay. From... Our SpaceX conversation, we've got EVs yeah. at the wazoo, I feel like. Yeah, everyone's coming. Like uh, Lucid announced their air has gotten certified by the EPA for 520 miles, right. which is over like almost 115 miles or something more than 110 miles more than 
uh, the Tesla Model S. That's an incredible accomplishment right. if they can deliver on that, which is pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, incredible accom- accomplishment is pretty incredible. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> but um, yeah, so Lucid uh, is about to start manufacturing. It's pretty exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, there's other activity happening as well. Go ahead. Yeah, so I watch Peacock very frequently, and the one problem with Peacock is that there's always commercials. Okay. And almost every commercial that's been happening lately is this Volkswagen, this new Volkswagen electric SUV. I haven't heard about this. Um, let me show it to you. Okay. So there's like there's a a picture of it. I mean, it's not. Let me see. This isn't. This is from Car and Driver. Okay. But looks pretty much like the other sort of Volkswagen SUVs. Yeah, totally. Like but, the Touareg um, or something. It's got a really like jazzy commercial. Okay. Maybe not jazzy, but you know, kind of like Apple esque, where it's like highly produced. Right. And so it's all. I I keep thinking. I'm like. Man, that's like a really good option. But I have a Tesla, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, well, what do we do? Like, it's a good option for non, like, so for somebody new who's looking mm-hmm. to buy an SUV. Right? I think it helps that I'm like really converted to uh, electric cars. Right. So, but I'm like, if we were getting rid of our Tesla, we're obvi- we won't go back from right. like EV. But would I buy Tesla again or would I consider Ooh. all of these, th- Other, you know, there's yeah. like this SUV and Tesla. I have the Model Y, which is like Tesla's SUV model sort right. of. Um, but now that there's a lot of options, I'm just curious. What's attractive, attracting you to this um, VW one? Um, the commercials. <laughs> 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 I awesome. can't say how the specs compare because I haven't like dived in a ton. Okay. But um and then there's like is an Audi coming out with one? Yeah. Um so Audi I think is also owned by VW if I'm not mistaken. So oh, like okay. uh Audi, Porsche, VW are all under the same sort of like umbrella. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense then. So I think Porsche has the Ty- uh, Taycan and then there's an Audi version of the Taycan which is I, for, I forget what it is. It's some kind of e-tron. Mm-hmm. Um, Mercedes-Benz is about to release their EQ series, EQ, and then they have like their sort of naming convention of C, E, S. Right. You know, so it's like EQ, C, EQ, E, EQ, S, something like that. But So I'm going to pose the question to you. What would I buy? Will you stick with Tesla? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm not even going to look at other uh, other stuff. I mean, like... Largely because, you know, Tesla is the Apple iPhone, and then these guys are the early Android versions of (laughs) really good smartphones, right? (laughs) Eventually, they might figure it out, but it's going to take them a while. And the the sort of Tesla network, the charging network, the Tesla software, the autopilot capabilities, which, oh, that's the other thing. Elon Musk has announced that this Friday, so what what is today? Thursday. Tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow at midnight. They're going to have version 10.1 of their software that's going to have a button that you can request a full self-driving capability if you have paid for it uh, to participate in a beta. Then the car is going to evaluate your driving for the next seven days, <laughs> <laughs> which I think is a mistake. <laughs> uh, and, and then they're going to sort of tell you whether or not you can you can have access to the beta. And it's full self-driving. No one else has anything close to that. So, you know, of course, I'm not going anywhere else. So my question is, are you going to press the button? <coughs> and oh, yeah. do you think your driving there, will like pass the 12, test? 12, yeah, that's a different <laughs> question, <laughs> which is why I think it's a mistake <laughs> to evaluate my driving <laughs> by some software. Yeah, yeah, I don't know I'm a about software it. guy. I don't, I don't trust software to evaluate my dri- driving, but I trust software to drive for me. That's interesting. I mean, I've driven with you. And so you know I'm a bad driver. I know you're just <laughs> wacky. You just lose your mind on the road and just start doing all kinds of stuff. No, no, no. You're, I, you do speed up really easily, though. Well, it's because I have the ludicrous version of the <laughs> Tesla, so you know I have to, you know, accelerate fast, <laughs> especially when I have a new passenger in the oh. car who hasn't experienced the whole ludicrous acceleration. Well, I don't know if Teslas can inc- like consider the ludicrous version in your driving 
Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see what who they reject, but mm -hmm. I think they're going to get a lot of backlash if they reject people based on their driving habits or whatever. Yeah. So we'll see. The privacy conversation has been, it continues to grow and grow and grow because there's new technology, but we, my friends and family were having a big conversation about the Apple privacy, you know, scanning our um, phone, oh, yeah. our phone photos for, you know, potentially... I think that's a super slippery slope. Yeah. And that's where, like, I've been thinking a lot more about privacy. And especially since we both watched Clickbait. Right. Separately, but we both watched Clickbait. And I was like, people could plant things in your phone photos. Right. I don't know if that's, I assume that's possible by where we're at. Sure. But people could plant things and Especially Frame since you. your camera is like um, accessible even when locked, right? Yeah. So, you know, you can grab someone's phone, open the camera, start taking pictures of, you, you know, nasty things. Yeah. But, um, and, you know, and then Apple thinks that it's their duty to sort of report someone who has something. I mean, like, it's it's just kind of, you know, and then why stop at just um, that that type of photo? I think that they're reporting. What is the type of photo? It's like it's got to be inside the child uh, the child pornography database of some kind. I, I forget what what the um, institute is that sort of has these photos. Right. Um, but they sort of match them up against that. Uh, but here here's the sort of issue: the fact that they are going to do something like that on your phone and figure it out and then sort of report you essentially to Apple, and then mm -hmm. Apple apparently takes a person, a human sort of like review to make sure it's it's not a false positive. Um, that just opens the door for a lot of other things that they could possibly do. Right. Right. And, um, and, and it opens the door for governments that are a little bit too um, ab abusive of, you know, privacy to say to Apple that, oh, you can do this, so we know you have the capability of doing it. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you want to operate in our country, you need to do X, Y, and Z. So it would have been way better for Apple to have just completely made the phone incapable of even doing those types of things as opposed to like making it much easier now for um, some governments to overstep their privacy issues. Yeah, and so m moving a little bit to a tangential subject, I've been following as it seems a lot of people have that Gabby Petito case. Yeah. Um, and such, such a sad case, by the way, such a sad case, but it also there's internet sleuths that are online. There's a whole Reddit thread and all of these things. And it's basically the internet is, seems to be solving the crime as, as it more and more information is gathered from people. And I think that's a good idea in terms, you know, it's a good thought that we can use the internet kind of crowdsource to gather evidence or, um, but it also is a little bit concerning in several ways. Um, but I, I did talk to this woman, I was reporting a story a few years ago about this group that does, you know, it's like designed to be on the internet finding, solving crimes. Okay. And um, so they have a lot of really interesting stories about how they truly have solved a crime working together on Reddit threads or um, Facebook groups or whatever. Um, but I've been thinking it is very fascinating and that yeah. we have so much access to information. information in and yeah. um, so, but I was thinking like, could this develop into its own social media platform or like its <laughs> own app or something? Like if you want to help si solve crimes. Yeah. I mean, it, I, I don't know, to be honest, I don't have, I haven't looked into what kind of capabilities are out there, but this uh, uh, Netflix uh, show that you just mentioned, Clickbait mm -hmm. actually has this sort of um, crowdsourced find the body type of uh, capability where, the, you know, people are searching kind of like uh, geo, uh, what do they call it? Geofencing. Geocaching. Or geocaching, yeah. where you just sort of like mark various different spots as a group and you don't have to collaborate in any other way other than the app. So um, I think these are all fascinating tools. I don't know if there's going to be a social platform specific before solving crimes, but um, I think um, that like people are going to use 
you know, social media things that people have posted to mm -hmm. help solve crimes. And it, that just makes sense, right? You know, uh, in Petito's case, they were like TikToking or something. So you could kind of sort of track the story up until the very end of their TikTok and sort of see, okay, well, who, well, who else connected with these guys? And um, a lot of that stuff has been helpful, apparently, to sort of know approximate whereabouts and things. But um, I think that's just going to happen more and more in the future. Well, what I'm wondering is if it would be a good idea to create some sort of um, app or because another conversation that's been going on around this case is, I don't know if you've seen the term like missing white woman syndrome. Mm. Um, people basically it's the idea that everyone's rallying around this one missing white girl, but there's all you know, especially in the Native American community, women go missing all the time. Right. And I guess this is getting a little off topic of tech, but one thing I was thinking about is what if there were a place to pre present clues, provide posting, if you, if you kind of took that as your, um, as one of your like social responsibilities that you join this app and then everything would be in the in one place, even if it's just for a specific like Native American women population or something. So, um, yeah, I, I I don't know about that. But one thing I want to comment on, which which this whole sort of like missing white woman syndrome issue, I suspect there's plenty of white women that go missing that you know nobody like it never makes the sort of national news. And I, and I think this case may have had one thing that is unique about it that it wouldn't have mattered if it was white, black. Hispanic, anything, I think the intrigue would have been there. And the intriguing part was that the boyfriend comes back <laughs> to the family and like just decides not to talk to authorities, right? And mm -hmm. like the family's not talking, the, the boyfriend's not talking. This is sort of like early on in the case. So like when I first read that aspect of the story, that's the, where the intrigue part was, not what color of her skin was. And, and I think that, you know, it's super easy for people who want to sort of like um, cast, uh, you know, I don't know. There's people who only view things in a in a certain angle or with a particular lens, mm -hmm. um, and the, the, you know you can do that if you want all day long about every single subject, about every single incident, and not everything necessarily fits that cast. And and I think this is one of those things where the intrigue was because the boyfriend was not talking, came back home to our, to his family as if like, oh I, yeah, we we kind of parted ways, uh, nothing to see here, and yeah. I have nothing to say by the way, uh, and here's my lawyer. I mean, like that aspect of it was just so shocking to people and people were like, wait, you can do that? You know, like, uh, and who knows what would have happened if the body wasn't found? Would would he have been able to get away with that? You know, like that that's the part that sort of is kind of interesting to, to people. Yeah. Well, and I also, before I saw this trending term on Twitter, um, I was assuming that it was so big because she has... A social a huge, media yeah, and follow. and of course that contributes to it as well for like getting the initial seed of the story out. But the right. moment that somebody hears about those aspects of the story is like, oh, wow, that yeah. that's crazy. Like I never heard of that before. Yeah. <laughs> you know where the where the you know number one suspect is essentially saying, I'm not talking. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're off topic. Well, yeah, I mean the 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 <laughs> you, I think you, we were talking about privacy issues and yeah, yeah, Apple yeah. and like sort of enabling, and you know. So, some of that, some aspects of privacy um, where the, there's overreach in helps solve these types of crimes. And I think that may have been what triggered you to start talking about that case. But um, there is definitely a balance. And I think Apple may have overreached that balance with uh, the update that they uh, put into the iPhone. Um, but their phone is still more private than the alternative, unfortunately. So, you know, that that is um, still probably the best phone from a privacy standpoint, which yeah. is part of the reason that I'm still an Apple fan. <laughs> yeah. Despite the fact that I think they have completely lost out on innovation. And, <laughs> you know, they haven't done much new uh, since Jobs, unfortunately. But Are you going to get the iPhone 13? I mean, like, it's just better camera. That's, that's it. You yeah. know, like, no, I, I can wait another year. Well, do you think there's going to be bigger changes next year? Well, I, you know, obviously they release a new uh, phone every year, and I th and I've been sort of on a two-year change cycle approximately, and th who knows 
th- I love my 12 so much that it might end up being a three-year cycle this time. Yeah. yeah. I just was thinking because every, I don't know why, but every Apple event, I'm like on the edge of my seat. Yeah. But I've been let they, down they, they for they the released, past like several years. Yeah. They released nothing new except for like <laughs> updates of existing products. It was like, are yeah. you kidding? And by the way, seven Apple Watches and 18-hour battery life? I mean, <laughs> come on. How could that still be a thing? <laughs> yeah. 18 hours, not even a day, not even 24 hours. Go from 18 to 24 at least. And, <laughs> and I, what's funny is that they could probably just claim 24 because it lasts about a day. Um, but like, it's just so disappointing <laughs> that it's not already a two or three days considering it's on V7. Yeah, exactly. Not V2, not V3, V7. What was V2? What was V1, the battery all, like? all of them have been 18 hours since really? V1. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was initially 12 hours, but no, I, no, I was wrong. It's I 18. Yeah, wow. It's been 18 from from version one. And it's been one of the biggest critiques of the Apple Watch is that the, it's battery got a short life. battery life. Yeah. yeah. You can't sleep with it, essentially. That's sort of like yeah, it. Yeah. It's, you have to decide either to charge it at night or sleep, do your sleep cycle app, right. and then charge it in the morning. Right. So, yeah. But technically, you don't have 24 hours. So you can't just charge it once in a day. You have right. to charge it twice if you're going to sleep with it. Yeah, that's so true. So that's crazy. It's just mind-blowingly stupid. We should be running Apple. <laughs> 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 well, let's just say almost anyone running Apple would have done almost equally as well as Tim Cook would have as long as they didn't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> Beep. <laughs> Um, well that's all I have that's a good place to end yeah the first episode yeah and maybe we can ask people hey do you like this Uh, should we do this (laughs) every week do you like us freewheeling (laughs) on mics Um, and talking about tech uh, both local and maybe national maybe we should focus just on local Um, if you found the discussion helpful leave us a comment let us know and we'll go from there yeah thanks Adrian sounds good thanks Amid yeah awesome (laughs) I don't know how off the rails that went. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It was good, though. I enjoyed it.